We live in an era, as I'm sure you've noticed, where many people, particularly Zoomers, are want to assume all sorts of labels, particularly with respect to psychological diagnoses. And so you'll encounter people that allegedly are ADHD or officially autistic, or they have schizophrenia, or they have gender dysphoria, or they have panic disorder, or they're bipolar, or they have clinical depression, and the list is endless. An example of this was something I encountered on a profile online, and it perfectly encapsulates what I mean. The she, her pronoun, if I say sorry repeatedly, it's a trauma-associated compulsive tick. It helps to be as comforting as you feel appropriate. I'm X, and unfortunately struggling with a lot. MDD-SR, PTSD with a dissociation, GAD, gender dysphoria, ADHDC, suicidality, and agoraphobia. Trans girl, 21 years old, with four years on HRT. Very sound individual here, obviously. Now, this is pretty extreme, but it is very trendy to say you have any number of diagnoses, and people use it to sort of bond with each other, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. But more broadly, one thing that people have always said about themselves frequently is how they're introverts. Everyone's an introvert. Something I even grew up with. You'd hear it frequently, and this is eons ago, so I'm quite ancient. Oh, I'm an introvert. I don't get energy from people. And I've tried to do research over the years, trying to find what the actual statistics are with respect to levels of introversion. And there just aren't any clear data on this, and I can tell you why, because most of it's self-reporting. Most of it is surveys. Some people say it's 30% of the population. Some people say it's less. Some people it's 50%. And so I do want to say that I've tried to do my homework on this over the years, but it's just not out there, anything reliable. But the reality is, is most of us probably are not introverts. And what do I mean by that? Well, very specifically, I mean that probably what's really going on, as opposed to proper introversion, which at least by nominal accounts, suggests that you get drained by socializing too much. You get drained by being in the company of people too much. And so you need to withdraw and remove yourself from the situation to recharge your batteries. And to be fair, that's probably true of everyone to some degree. If you spent seven days a week nonstop socializing, even if you are quote unquote, very extroverted, at some point in time, you're going to say, I just want to chill. I want to relax. I want to be on my own. Sure. But this notion of introversion is interesting because when I was growing up, I thought I was introvert too. But here's the reality behind that. The reality was and is that I'm a freak. Now, freak typically evokes certain images. By that, I'm not saying necessarily that I or anyone else is a quasi-moto, some kind of hunchback of Notre Dame, some kind of foul monster to behold. At best, I'm average looking. No, specifically what I'm talking about is in terms of personality. I've had a personality and a range of interests that just didn't really mesh very well with people from top to bottom, even to the basic level of etiquette. So here's a really simple one. I've always struggled with the notion of birthdays, thinking, well, yeah, you were born, so what? I kind of get the symbolic value behind it, but it never struck me as something worthy of congratulating people on. And the same is true of being pregnant. This is another one that I've constantly run into trouble with regarding people because you see some woman with a big belly and they say, oh, congratulations. And I'm just thinking, okay, they copulated. I imagine it requires some expenditure of calories and now she's pregnant. And so he ejaculated successfully within her, but I don't get it. Rats and mice copulate and get pregnant as well. It just doesn't seem like this grand deed. And so why would I congratulate you? And I, I get the, again, symbolic association, something to look forward to, I guess. And so by nature, I'm very weird when it comes to these types of etiquette. And that alone was a reason for me to be somewhat of a social pariah. Then on top of that, you look at range of interests, which don't overlap with people. And pretty soon you come to the conclusion that you don't get along with a lot of people. They don't really get along with you. And then, and it probably is a form of cope, you rationalize it to yourself and say, well, I'm introverted, right? Now, you can be a freak in many different ways. It is possible to actually look like a Quasimodo. You're a sub five, you're too short. You have horrible facial structure, all these things. They're very real, make no mistake. But in many cases, maybe even most cases, your quote unquote introversion is simply due to a different range of worldviews, a lack of overlap when it comes to opinions and, and how you perceive the world. 
That seems to be much more salient and relevant and germane than you're somehow introverted because people drain you. Now, if I had to deal with a person of the sort whose profile I read off in the beginning, that would drain me quite a bit too because I think this person is laboring, at least in part, under some kind of delusion. But that doesn't mean I'm introverted per se. And I've discovered over the years, by dint of good fortune, having met people that I actually get along with, with sufficient overlap in terms of worldview and conception of how human beings are, that I'm actually not that introverted. I can be quite social at times. Of course, we all have our limits, as I said. No, usually this business of introversion is just a cope. It means that people don't like you, you don't like them, a little bit of column A, a little bit of B, and a mixture of maybe C, whatever it might be. There's something fundamentally preventing you from connecting with people, which then leads you to incorrectly assess yourself as an introvert. But in reality, you just don't really get along with most people. You can't talk to most people. And I encounter this routinely. And so another example, the other day I was in conversation with a female scientist, somebody who does chemistry, works in a laboratory. And for some reason, she started talking about toxic masculinity. Now, initially I wasn't participating, but then my ears perked up and I challenged her with various bits of information, including studies. Long story short, she backed down and didn't really want to engage in a discussion with me. But do I want to be extroverted with a person like that who talks about things like toxic masculinity and the wage gap or whatever? No, probably not. And increasingly, if you're anything like me, which you may or may not be, who knows, we're living in a world where the Overton window is very clear. And I'll be perfectly frank, I have a lot of wrong think in my noggin. There are a lot of things I think about the world, which I ultimately am convinced are accurate, or at least more accurate than the mainstream purports their representations of the world to be. But if you were to give voice to some of these thoughts, say pronounced gender differences, just as a random example, then you will be marked as a pariah. You will be seen as someone not worthy of associating with. And so that's them in that case rejecting you. But you also don't want to necessarily associate with them. And so what do you end up with? You end up with this idea that you're an introvert. But in reality, you're not really an introvert. You're just some person that doesn't get along with most people. And so de facto, you are introverted because you don't want to talk to them. They don't want to talk to you and so on and so forth. And that could have many different reasons. In my own case, it's mostly down to my worldviews, the way I interact with people, because I can be quite autistic. I don't mean that in a literal sense, more in the internet sense. So yeah. That's really what this myth of introversion is about. Not that many people are actually introverted. They just don't have access to people that they want to be extroverted with because they don't feel comfortable with them for any number of reasons. They're not attractive enough as individuals. Their personality is too different. But the reality is, is that is a kind of cope because if you could find people that you got along with, you probably wouldn't be that introverted. Quite the contrary, you would be extroverted but for all these reasons. All in all, being a normie about your views concerning the world helps facilitate you being, quote unquote, less introverted because you're going to be able to bond with people and connect with people in a much broader way than you otherwise would be if you have too much wrong thinking in your head, if you're not politically correct, or if you just have certain mannerisms that don't mesh well with people. And I've encountered this time and again. I recently encountered a gentleman to give yet another example that I was engaged in a discussion with and it was not my intention to insult him whatsoever. Him being from Australia, I refer to him as I conventionally do with the denizens of Oceania as a lord of marsupials. And he took great umbrage at this and so got very angry at me. And the reality is I call everyone something because they all have titles in my worldview. And there was no malice behind that. And yet clearly I was not meant to get along with this person because he didn't like being the Lord of Marsupials. And the question, what do you do about this? Well, there isn't a whole lot you can do about it. Like everything in life, it's a crapshoot. Everything you could hope to want comes down to dumb luck, unfortunately. And there isn't too much you can do with that. All you can do is hope for the best. Otherwise, you will be left to perpetually label yourself an introvert for the rest of your life until you finally, if the gods bless you sufficiently with fortune, encounter people that you can be quote unquote extroverted with, i.e. just yourself. At the end of the day, that's what this is about. It's about being able to be yourself versus being restricted in being yourself. And that probably is 
broadly the fine line between purported extroversion versus introversion. Now, I'm not claiming that proper introversion or extroversion doesn't exist, but what I am claiming is that it's far rarer than people claim, and we don't have good data on it anyway. And so when I observe myself and countless individuals during the course of my life, I notice that they're not really introverted. They just say that until they meet people they get along with. This is kind of the point. At the end of the day, if you think you're introverted, you're probably just some kind of freak, just like I'm a freak. And unfortunately, that's just sometimes how the cookie crumbles. What can you do? As always, thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons. You guys keep the channel going. I am very grateful for your support on Patreon. And special thanks to the people who donate to me on PayPal. You guys are equally important. Really appreciate you. As for everyone else, if you can leave a like, comment, share, or subscribe. The usual YouTube jazz. I heard someplace that that helps. Who knows? Recently, somebody asked me how it was possible for this channel to exist for more than 10 years and for it to still not be at 100K. Well, shadow banning, algorithm gods not favoring you, and so on and so forth. So maybe that will help. Probably not, knowing my luck. Until the next time, may the gods watch over you. Until then, if I'm still alive, bye bye for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.